welcome back to the shop. So this week's video is going to be a little bit different. Um, what I'm going to try and do is kind of step you through where the Audi project is this week. But I've already gotten started on it and didn't film it. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is this is going to be partially picture slideshow with voiceover and a couple of live spots as well. So bear with me and uh, let's get to it. Feeder gunner. What is that? It's a revenant. What's a revenant? Basically a zombie. Something you didn't expect to come back from the dead. And this car has been through four or five owners. Uh, it was a parts car at one point and I think no one's expected it to come back from the dead. So what is the car? What it is, is a 1988 Audi 90 Quattro, so all-wheel drive, uh, came with a 2.3 liter engine originally, and <clears throat> normally aspirated engine. When I got the car, it had a 10 valve 2.2 liter turbo engine in it, five cylinder. As you can see, it's not in bad shape. Um, it's had a lot of suspension things done to it already. Uh, but it was kind of uh, done not the way I would do it. Let's put it that way. It's got a rear sway bar on it that I need to have on it, but, you know, it had kind of the standard shocks on it with uh, aftermarket lowering springs, which doesn't work very well. Uh, and I wanted it to be more of a serious track car. As you can see here, this is one of the places where it was pretty disgusting and it's kind of forgotten. Uh, that's before I got it. This is some of these pictures are from the previous owner. This is after I got it, uh, parked next to my GTI, which is my daily driver. Uh, it's kind of fun. I'm hoping that I can make it at least as quick in a straight line as the GTI, but we'll see what, ha what happens. So here's a picture of it sitting on jack stands outside the shop. Uh, I've got the engine out at this point and uh, have started taking things apart see what I need to do so the engine the original engine that I got with it ran I drove the car 60 miles home uh, but after I pulled it out figuring it was leaking um, figured I'd seal it all up leaks are a bad idea on a track car so uh, it's uh, got it apart and uh, discovered that it had a set of very expensive JE pistons in it that had been detonated to death because it had never been tuned properly, basically. Um, somebody had thrown stock CIS on it. It had had a kind of cobbled together uh, aftermarket injection uh, thrown on it, and it was just not very well done. Suspension, you can see it's got aftermarket springs on it. Uh, it's got stainless brake lines. It's got uh, the rear sway bar here. Well, that's actually the front sway bar, sorry. And I have one like that. That's the rear sway bar, which they don't come with normally. Um, I have a set of two Bennett race coilovers to go on it. Uh, basically, it's a do-it-yourself coilover kit, but it uses the Coney race inserts that you see here. Uh, they're double adjustable. Uh, they're high box springs that are made. The wheels that are going on it are KE Motorsports 15 by 8s with some 225 15 RS4s. Here you can see some of the detonation damage on that number one piston. Um, and it, it's just bad. It, it was bad enough that it scored the cylinders in the block, uh, particularly on number one and number five. Um, found neat things like bolts missing, this open electrical block right here. Uh, what was that? Oh, that's the that's the water inlet for the turbo. Bolt missing out of the crank damper. Not for fuel injection system line on a CIS, 70 PSI system. This is just me cleaning up some of the stuff for it. Um, we got them cleaned and, well, that's before they were cleaned. This is cleaned and painted. Basically, all I did was blast them and then put clear, uh, matte clear on them. Uh, and it's high temperature clear. You can see that's just me with my little PVC tube thing. This is getting the car uh, taken apart. 
you can see that uh, it's got an aftermarket shifter that appears like it's maybe an owner made thing at some point. Uh, that would be the seat and the dash that's going in the car. Okay, in one of our actual filmed sections of this video, um, we're going to go over some of the stuff that I'm using to convert the Audi, which was originally a CIS or KJetronic injection system, which is basically in the iteration it was in this car, it was or a mechanical injection, hydraulic really, uh, with some electronic controls, but not a lot. Uh, anyway, we're converting over to a full EFI setup, uh, a modern full EFI setup, and uh, here's some of the stuff I'm going to use. So, as you can see here, we have an ECU Master EMU Black. Uh, there are a number of different ECUs with this, the capabilities that this one has. This one I thought was the best bang for the buck, to be honest. It gets good reviews. Um, it's relatively well known and it, it has everything I need. It has dual knock sensors, you know, it, it can do uh, the Bosch 4.9 uh, LSU wideband, which is the current good guy version. Um, it, and it's just a good all around unit, like I said. Um, I looked into Mega Squirts because I've had some experience with those, but for the Mega Squirt Pro, it's actually more expensive than this. Um, and I'm honestly, I'm not that pleased about Mr. Bowling and Grippo no longer doing open source, which kind of pisses me off. And if you're gonna start off that way, you should continue that way. Anyway, the full wiring harness for the engine. Uh, we have temp senders and oil pressure senders. Now, here's something that's kind of interesting. Let's see if I can snag this thing out. This is the oil pressure and temperature sender that I've got. And it's kind of an interesting unit. I kind of stumbled across this. So this sensor does both oil temperature and oil pressure in one sender, just a, kind of an oddball uh, plug, but it's, it's available. If you go buy this and look it up by the Bosch number, they're about $160, which is not cheap. If you look them up by the factory Mazda number, where these sit, were used, they were used in a number of German cars, obviously being Bosch, but they were also used in Mazda 6s. They cost about half as much. Part number is PY8V TAC18 TAC541 Bravo. So if you're looking for a sender that kind of does everything, this is the one to use. Uh, and interestingly enough, it is actually pre-programmed into the ECU. So uh, I've got 42 pound injectors, so that's 440 cc's, which should get me uh, to the power levels that I'm looking at for the engine in this car. Um, one of the things that's kind of difficult is, of course, all metric fittings. But you can use these lovely 5 sixteenths to AN6 uh, compression fittings on the fuel lines, and they work just great. So we'll be doing that. Uh, let's see what we got here. All kinds of connectors for the injectors and uh, coil packs. The coil packs I'm using are the Red Top uh, Audi VW units. Uh, they're R8 coils, which is not all that they come in. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? We got cruise control solenoids, we've got knock sensor, we've got intake air temp sensor, a Bluetooth adapter, which is one of the one of the shortcomings of that one is it's not natively Bluetooth, but it's a fairly easy fix. Not terribly expensive. Um, this is the manifold I'm using. Um, so an interesting thing about CIS cars is that when they when you want to convert like Volkswagens at least they have a screw-in cup that goes in the head is what holds the injector 
Well, Volkswagen later went to electronic injection with the same engines. So they just made a different cup that screws in the head. So it's super simple to convert a car that had Bosch CIS, at least in the Volkswagen Audi world, into uh, electronic injection. So it's a doable thing. Um, the car had or actually had a cobbled together EFI system on it at one point. Um, so I have a fuel rail with the standoffs and this manifold is already drilled for that. Um, so I have that to use already, already AN6. Uh, I have a fuel pressure regulator. Uh, let's see what else. I got a forge bypass valve. Um, these are electrical things for doing main power uh, to the battery. And then one of the slides that I'll show you is a picture that I took. Uh, it'll be in the things that I found section. Um, but basically there was an electrical connection up in the engine compartment that was just a large bare metal with full battery amperage to it. And uh, I, I just can't even imagine what the thought process was in using that. But in any case, so that's what's going on with this. Um, I'm going to take you back for a second and I'm going to grab uh, something I forgot to grab actually. And that'll be the ignition stuff. I'm doing some stuff there that'll be interesting too. So hold on just one minute. Okay, we're back again. And this is what I was talking about. So what I've got here are the coil packs and a bracket that I made on the CNC plasma table, designed it in Fusion 360. And then this piece here welds on to here. And there's a boss on the head already drilled and tapped for another bracket that isn't being used. It was actually for a uh, bracket for the ignition wires, which obviously we're not going to use. So these are, uh, or I should say this one is version 1.0. It had a couple of issues. A, it was really thick and it really doesn't need to be. These things are actually pretty solid on the head when they're pushed, just pushed on. Um, I just didn't want them wiggling around while the engine's running and self-destructing eventually. Um, so I thought bolting to the head. So that caused some problems with this bracket. Um, I put another fillet in on the second version uh, and I'm going to be cutting it out of thinner material. So, uh, these actually, uh, nobody in the Audi world offers these. And there are a number of cars that I've seen converted over to uh, uh, EFI. Uh, and most of them still want to run the distributor for some unknown reason. Uh, this is, I think, a far better solution. And I am actually going to be selling these brackets once I get a chance to make it a little bit prettier. I, again, the second version, is, this was very, very simple. So uh, I just prettied it up and made it a little bit different. Uh, cut out some weight, because I also don't want a big floppy thing hanging off the side of that engine as well. So um, like I said, these will be for sale um, once I get the final version solidified. Anyway, that's what I'm doing for uh, coil or for ignition, I should say. And uh, on to the next thing. Okay, so here's some more shots of the coil on plug system that I'm using. Uh, that's it mounted on the head, as you can see. They would just normally stick up in a space, and I don't like things flopping around on a track car particularly, but I'd probably do this on a street car even. Um, and they really need to be some support, all the weights at the top of them. So here's uh, inside of the car. This is where the power steering. So this is a Volvo power steering pump, uh, power or electric power steering pump that I'm going to use instead of the engine mounted one that they always leak. Had to take out the giant washer bottle. Uh, that's the Momo steering wheel that I'm using. Um, one of the things that I'm making is a shorter uh, hub mount. And so what I did was I, you can't buy one. So I cut apart the stock steering wheel as you can see, I'm taking chunks out of it and uh, tearing it apart with a wire wheel, basically, 
cutting more parts of it off here on my little bandsaw. So basically I just got the hub, uh, stuck it in the lathe, turned it down so it was flat and square, uh, as you can see here. All right, so that's all we have for this week. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed your way through it. That brings us up to date on this project. Um, right now, uh, I talked to uh, Colin at Tectonics, which is like any of you Volkswagen guys will know Colin from Tectonics probably. They've been around for 40 years or so. In fact, I was buying parts from them in the uh, probably late 80s. So uh, they're doing the cylinder head for the motor right now, uh, putting in slightly larger intake valves very slightly larger intake valves, but we're putting in stainless intakes and Inconel exhausts, uh, upgraded springs, and smaller valve stems. So even though I'm not doing any real porting on the engine, I'm going to gasket match it, but other than that, it's not really getting ported. Uh, but even at that, it's still gonna flow a little bit better. And one of the things that uh, these things have a problem with is when the valves get old, the original exhaust valves are two-piece uh, valves that have sodium, they're sodium filled, and the heads drop off, which does what you, exactly what you would expect. It destroys the engine. Um, in fact, I've got a block sitting over there that has that exact problem. In any case, you can't get the uh, original factory valves, which were fine when they were new, but now, you know, these all valves all have hundreds of thousands of miles on them. Uh, the engine that's sitting right in front of me here that you can't really, it's out of this frame, uh, was used in a rally car, so it had the living crap beat out of it. And it, it's just a candidate for failure. So I'm not looking to make a lot of power out of this 10 valve. What I am looking to do is make it re as reliable as possible. And the forged crank, the forged the stock forged rods, the stock forged pistons are all good quality and they're, again they're all forged you know so they're the sort of thing that you would upgrade to in a lot of engines. The valves though yeah not gonna happen so they're doing the head right now and I just talked to Colin this week we're looking for yeah, another three weeks or so before it gets back in the meantime uh, I got to decide which block I'm using I've got the one that's here in front of me that has great bores, but it was in a rally car and they broke off uh, one of the mounts for the front snubber mount. The other block I've got has some scratches in the bore, which I'm not sure I'll be able to hone out and stay with stock sized pistons. And unfortunately, oversized pistons for these engines are not available. So I'm kind of stuck. It's either that or I just go find another block that has the front of it's good and the uh, bores are also good. So then I'll hone it, re-ring it, you know, new, new bearings. You can see all the parts I've got back here. I've got rings, bearings, water pumps, get head gaskets. It's getting a 20 valve head gasket. Uh, they're a multi-layered steel gasket. Uh, I'll deck the block and, you know, do all the normal machine work. I'll probably hone it myself because uh, it's not that difficult to do. I might even machine the top of the block myself because it will fit on my bridge board. So uh, anyway, that's all we got for this week, and I hope you have a great week ahead. Please uh, subscribe, like the video if you liked it, and uh, let me know in the comments if you didn't like it, what you didn't like. Can't uh, give it, You can't improve without feedback. So in any case, talk to you later.